Roger Carlos Villanueva. I'm Marine Corps instructor of water survival at the pool aboard Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island, South Carolina. My goal in this video is to teach you why swim qualification is so important, how taking it seriously can save your life, and what to expect during swim week at boot camp. I will teach you all the levels of swim qualification, break down each event, and provide tips needed not just to pass, but to dominate the test at each qualification level. First, I want you to understand why Marines are required to know how to swim and be confident in the water, and the role it's played in our history. Water survival is very important in the Marine Corps because we are amphibious in nature. Soldiers from the sea, if you would. Years ago, we were shooting individuals from the ship's riggings, and we had started in the sea, and we come from the sea. So Marine Corps water survival is important because we're teaching Marines how to survive in the water in the event that they find themselves in an open water aquatic environment. Being able to assist themselves and exhausted or wounded marine to safety is going to put more assets on the beach to the fight. And in my opinion, that's in keeping with the Commandant's vision of going back to our amphibious roots. Marines are amphibious. All of our bases are on the coast and we are transported by Navy ships. We perform many water-based operations. Every year there are mishaps in the water where Marines are either required to save themselves or render aid to others. In 2020, Marines arose to the occasion and saved many lives around the world rescuing people from drowning. These unfortunate situations validate the need for Marines to be confident in the water. Over the years, we have unfortunately lost Marines to drowning in training accidents and mishaps. The Marine Corps has learned from these accidents and developed its training to prepare Marines for these life or death situations. Here is one infamous example. December 9, 1999, I witnessed firsthand the CH-46 crash that occurred off the coast of California. I was about a mile from that crash site. We immediately drove over towards the crash site. By the time we got to it, anybody who, had, who was going to perish that day, they had already died, and uh, everybody who had been rescued had already been rescued. The Marines that, that ended up dying on that day, they didn't die because they weren't good swimmers. Every single person in that helicopter was a phenomenal swimmer. They were all Force Reconnaissance Marines. The reason that they, uh, the reason they perished that day was because they had equipment on that they couldn't get off, and that equipment, the weight of it, drug them down. Now, today, with the Water Survival Program, we train to teach Marines to shed their equipment and save their own lives. We can get new equipment, we can't get new Marines. There are six levels to the Marine Corps Water Survival Program. First, we have Water Survival Basic, where every Marine and recruit have to do as a bare minimum. After that, we have Basic Plus, where it's only done at the recruit depots. So this is only for a select few of MOSs that require it. After that, we have Intermediate and Advanced. This is for all Marines who want to advance their skill levels in the water survival, or there's some MOSs that also require it. After that, we have Marine Corps Instructor Water Survival, which is basically what I am. So what we do is we go through a three-week course where we certify as a lifeguard for the Red Cross, and we also certify to rescue Marines either at a pool or out in the ocean for in a training environment. After that, we have the Marine Corps Instructor Trainer of Water Survival. These are the subject matter experts of the Water Survival Program. They're the ones who train the trainer. So let's talk about Water Survival Basic and what follows it. First, we have the Shallow Water Assessment. This is where you swim 25 meters in the shallow end, so you test your comfort level in the water. Next, we have the conduct self rescue, where you jump off a 10 foot platform in the deep end and swim 25 meters, utilizing one of the six authorized strokes. Next, we have employee flotation device, where you grab a pack, you jump in the water in the deep end, and you use it to float and swim for 25 meters. Next event is gonna be stay on surface. This is where you float or tread water or utilize a boss inflation for a time limit of four minutes. That last event is gonna be a shallow water gear shift. So this is gonna be your last event. This is where you have a, a vest, a helmet, and a rifle. So with this, you stand, stand up in the shallow end, you go underwater, take all that gear off, and then stand back up. We'll break down these events a little bit further in a bit. The shallow water assessment is conducted in the shallow end of the pool, where it's four feet deep. You will be wearing full utilities, which include your blouse, trousers, and boots. You'll be lined up in groups of 10 outside of the water. 
Then you'll be told to slide into the water feet first while grabbing onto the side of the pool. At this moment, there will be a number of swim instructors inside of the water for the recruit's safety and to observe the recruits are conducting the event correctly. Once the lead swim instructor tells you to swim, you'll utilize one of the six authorized strokes to swim the 25 meters, which is from one side of the pool to the other. You will do this without touching the bottom or the sides of the pool. The swim instructors will be under the water watching you. And trust me, we see everything. If you happen to fail this event, you will be considered an iron duck. We'll talk more about this later. The biggest thing we see recruits struggle with is fear and lack of confidence in the water. Too many recruits show up to boot camp without ever getting a body of water until now. They have no idea what to expect, no swimming skills, and no confidence. We see recruits let go of the side and start to panic immediately, even though they're in the shallow end and they're able to stand up. Here in the Hammerhead Swim Program, we will teach you every skill you need to know and able to swim across the pool confidently and move on to the next event, which is a conduct self wrestling. For this event, it will be conducted in the deep end of the pool, which is 10 feet deep. You'll be wearing the same full utility uniform. You'll receive a class on how to perform this event the right way. After recruits receive the class, they'll be lined up behind the ladders of the 10-foot tower. Recruits will climb up the ladders one at a time and five recruits on top of the platform at all times. There will be a swim instructor on top of the platform sending the recruits off and making sure they take a full step and jump to clear the platform. There will be swim instructors on the side of the pool watching every single recruit jump off the tower and swim while holding a rescue tube and a ring buoy. They are put into these zones to maximize the safety of the recruits and to observe proper conduct of the event. Once a swim instructor tells you to step, you will take a full step and a hop off the tower while keeping your arms crossed until you enter the water. Once you come back up to the surface, you will swim another 25 meters while using any of the six authorized strokes. Recruits that struggle the most are those who are afraid of heights and lack confidence of entering the water and coming back up to the surface. Common factors include uncrossing their arms or attempting to grab the tower, both automatic failures. We will teach you exactly how to enter the water, come back up to the surface, and swim with confidence and ease so you can continue to the next event, which is an employee flotation device. This event is also conducted on the deep end of the pool. You will be in the same uniform that you utilized earlier that day. You will receive a class on how to employ a pack or a ruck. After the class, you will be told to line up on the side of the pool with three recruits side by side, each of you carrying a pack. The pack is a flotation device, meaning it floats and makes it easier to swim with. There will be swim instructors on the side of the pool to ensure the recruit safety and to ensure that the proper techniques are being utilized. Once the swim instructor tells you to jump, you will take a, a full step and a hop into the pool. Then you will employ that pack and swim 25 meters while maintaining positive control of that pack. You will be able to utilize fi any five of the different techniques used to swim with the pack and use that as a flotation device and swim those 25 meters. What recruits with, struggle with the most is the lack of confidence in the pack staying afloat and their individual fear of the water. There are recruits who just don't believe that the pack floats, and they start to panic instead of using the gear to their advantage to swim across. Their hammerhead swim program will teach you each technique you need to know so you can swim those 25 meters without even breaking a sweat. After you pass, you'll move on to the next event, which is a four minute stay on surface, also known as the tread water. For the stay on surface event, you will receive a class that will tell you how to flow on your back. This event will be conducted in the deep end of the pool and you will be in the same uniform that you've been utilizing that day. After the class, you will be grouped with four recruits and assigned a swim instructor. This ratio maximizes the safety of the recruits participating in the event. That swim instructor will then tell you to sit on the side of the pool and put your feet in the water. Then you will be told to slide into the water while hanging on to the side of the pool. From here, you will lock out your arms, put your head all the way back, and take a deep breath. The swim instructor will then say, go. At this point, you will let go of the pool, at the side of the pool, and either float or tread water for four minutes. The time will begin as soon as you let go of the side, and it will end whenever the swim instructor tells you to swim to the side and exit the water. 
This event is often make it or break it for most recruits. During the stay on surface, you have to utilize the proper techniques to stay afloat for those four minutes. Some recruits who know they can't swim and tread water will generally use the technique of floating on their back because it's a lot easier to do. However, without the proper technique and skill, many go vertical in the water and they don't know how to recover from that. Therefore, in this position, they, many just simply panic and they fail. For those who feel overly confident, they often don't retain the proper techniques taught in the class. These recruits typically enter the water and attempt to muscle it out and tread water. What these recruits don't realize is that treading water with utilities and boots is a lot more challenging than they think, and they end up failing due to their lack of skill. Don't worry though, here at the Hammerhead Swim Program, we will teach you everything you need to know on how to, how to pass and move on to the next event. The last event, the shallow water gear shift, it is conducted as the name states, in the shallow end of the pool. You will be in a full combat load, which includes your utilities, top and bottom, boots, and you will also be wearing your plate carrier and fl or flak, your Kevlar helmet, and a rubber rifle. You will receive a class on proper safety on how to pass the event. You will then be lined up in groups of, of 10 on the side of the pool. You will put on that gear, that flak, Kevlar, and rifle, and wait for further instructions from that swim instructor. You will then be told to stand on the, on the pool edge, then take a full, full step and a hop into the pool. You will bend your knees for impact and then stand back up and face the swim instructor. Once you're in the water, you will be told that you have a time limit of 10 seconds and you will fully submerge yourself under the water to take all that gear off. When you successfully remove that flat Kevlar and rifle, you will stand back up with your hands above your head. At this time, you have passed the final event and you will, have, you will be told to grab all that gear and exit the water. Where recruits tend to fail is when they have fear of being under the water for some time. Whether it is holding their breath or the weight of the gear itself, they have problems being calm while attempting to remove that gear. Each of those issues are something that I can help you work on. When you don't pass an event on your first try, you will receive a second attempt to pass that event. If you fail again, you will be designated as an iron duck and will be provided additional training. The term iron duck easily identifies those, those who struggle at swimming, but is in no way meant to alienate that recruit. As an iron duck, you will receive at least two sessions per day for the rest of the week. Each session will consist of an hour-long class with a small group of recruits per swim instructor. After that period of instruction, you will attempt to pass all the basic swim qualification again. You will do this all week until you pass, or if you fail to do so, you will be dropped back in training. It is important you pass from qualification as fast as you can to not hurt the progress of your platoon, as you will miss many other key training events. You will do this all week until you pass, or if you fail to do so, you will be dropped back in training. It is important you pass from qualification as fast as you can to not hurt the progress of your platoon, as you will miss a lot of key training events. If you fail basic or basic plus qualification and you had a special MOS, you run the risk of losing your contract for that MOS. So we just covered each of the events in basic swim qualification. They include shallow water assessment, where you swim 25 meters in the shallow end. Conduct self-rescue, where you jump off the, the 10 foot platform and swim another 25 meters. The employee flotation device, where you jump to the water with a, a pack or a ruck and you swim for another 25 meters. The stay on surface, where you tread water or float for four minutes. The shallow water gear shed, where you have all this gear on in the shallow end, go in the water and take it all off. Once you pass basic swim qualification on your first attempt, you have the possibility of moving on to basic plus qualification. There's a select list of MOSs that require recruits to have ba the basic plus swim qualification. That's in order for them to continue to that specialty. This includes MOSs such as recon, AEVs, and much more. Basic Plus consists of swimming 150 meters continuously after jumping off the 10 foot platform. Then recruits will complete a seven minute stay on surface while showing proficiency on blouse inflation. For the 150 meter swim, it will be conducted in the deep end of the pool. You will be wearing the same utilities that you were wearing for basic. There are four authorized strokes for the Basic Plus qualification. It is a cross stroke, 
breaststroke, side stroke, and the elementary on back. Recruits struggle the most with the lack of skill, which results in fatigue and causes them to fail. The next event is a seven minute stay on surface. The only difference from basic is the length of time and the introduction of the blouse inflation. For this event, you will tread water or float for two minutes. Next, you will be told to transition and you will have the remaining five minutes to inflate your blouse using any of the techniques that were taught. You will have to inflate your blouse in order and show proficiency in order to pass basic plus qualification. Recruits struggle with confidence in the inflation technique, often because they do not trust that the blouse will work as a flotation device. I will teach you the different techniques on how to inflate your blouse. Don't worry. Now that covers the conduct and event requirements for both water survival basic and basic plus. Let's talk about what happens when you fail to meet this requirement. So that is everything about the conduct of swim call aboard the recruit depots. If you don't know how to swim, want to pass swim call, or just want to advance in swimming skills, the Hammerhead Swim Program is for you. We have taken everything I've learned as a McQuiz, Operations Chief, Certified Lifeguard, and Lifeguard Instructor to create this program that is perfect for you. For more information, check out beforethecore.com or the link in our bio. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to learn more about other aspects of boot camp.